Guys, what is happening? This is Brent Axe, Syracuse.com. We're here on the Syracuse.com Orange Basketball Facebook page as the rivalry is alive and well. What a game. Syracuse comes back down 13 points in D.C. to their old friends, their old rivals, the Georgetown Hoyas. Patrick Ewing now on the sideline and Georgetown up 53 to 40 with about 10 minutes to go. Things not looking so good for the Orange to start, but what a comeback. Down 13 points. Syracuse scratches and claws and fights and rebounds and hits big shots and does exactly what it needs to do to send a game into overtime, and they win in overtime by a score of 86 to 79. So the Orange have snapped a two-game winning streak by the Georgetown Hoyas, which is certainly important. The Orange also avoided what would have been a pretty bad loss on their strength of schedule and RPI, not to mention you would have lost three straight to Georgetown. Who wants that? But, you know, with Georgetown's awful strength of schedule, it's literally the worst in the country. You did not want to lose this game. From that standpoint, the Orange needed to pick up a, a win on the road, which they did. And, hey, they beat Georgetown. That's all you need to know, right? What time is it? It's 3.31 in Georgetown. Ah, you know the rest. So, hey, we're here on Facebook Live. So if you are joining us, thank you for that. But please like and share. Let people know that we're here doing this right now. Make sure you throw your comments in there as well, and we'll check on those as we go along here. So what a comeback by Syracuse. What a show of grit and determination. And, you know, Merrick Doljai hits the court. His head smacks the floor, gets right back up. He's okay. They checked him out, and he's all right. But look, for 35 minutes, this was a pretty awful game. It was a pretty awful game on both sides, particularly the first half. Georgetown couldn't hit shots. Syracuse couldn't hit shots. Both teams really struggled to find itself on the offensive end. Georgetown, you know, started really going at it in terms of pace. They really started attacking the basket. They were breaking down the Syracuse zone. They owned about the first, what, 13, 14 minutes of the second half. Syracuse was struggling to keep pace. Syracuse went into their press defense, which they don't want to break out often. And you don't want to break out on – you know, more than a few possessions, but really had to and did enough in that press defense to get back in this thing. But, you know, Syracuse just kept fighting. And, you know, you had a situation down the stretch. You know, Syracuse was down 53 to 40 with about 10 minutes to go, and they just weren't hitting shots. O'Shea Brissett, who had one point at halftime, he was 0 for 3, one point at halftime, ends up with 25 points and 14 rebounds. 24 of those points were scored in the second half or overtime. He's attacking the basket. He started hitting some threes. That was big. Tyus Battle, who came out of halftime with 11 points, was kind of quiet for a while, comes alive down the stretch, hits a big three-pointer. Syracuse really needed the three the Tyus Battle hit. There's a minute and a half to go. He sticks a three from the corner. And it's 69-67. And, you know, it, it was the sequence right before that where Syracuse had scored, and it's 69-64, and they got the ball back. But coming out of the timeout, they didn't give Syracuse the ball, but, you know, as they originally looked like they were going to. But it was all a moot point as Syracuse gets that three. And then they come down the stretch, and Frank Howard, who we'll talk about here in a moment, has a three-pointer and misses. O'Shea Brissett's inside and misses. Syracuse has all those shots at the end and couldn't put him in, and we end up going to overtime, but Syracuse thoroughly dominates overtime, hitting shots and keeping the ball away from Georgetown, and you just kind of saw a Georgetown team that, you know, to their credit, you know, I think Patrick Ewing's got something going there. Georgetown played an awful non-conference schedule this year. I mean, they that is the most pathetic non-conference schedule I've ever seen, and I don't blame Patrick Ewing for doing that because, you know, you got to get this team – to get some wins, you got to build up their confidence. It's kind of empty calories. It's like eating a Snickers bar, if you ask me. But, you know, taking over a program, you want to instill some confidence. I understand why he would do it. But I didn't know how good this Georgetown team was. I knew Jesse Govan was a great player. And to, to Georgetown's credit, I think they showed, you know, maybe they were a pretty decent team. Mosley came off the bench and had 20 points. And they got some players. They got some talent there. But, look, all told, Syracuse avoids what would have been a disaster in terms of you don't want to lose three times to Georgetown. They avoid a bad loss in the strength of schedule category and the RPI category, and you get a win on the road, a true road win, as they say. Syracuse has certainly played away from the Dome this year, but a true road win at Georgetown, at your rival. Take that, Patrick Ewing. And, 
Uh, well, uh, Jim Beheim had a great line in the post-game press conference when he said, you know, it, it felt like the old Syracuse-Georgetown games, except there wasn't any blood on the floor. Well, there was plenty of calls in this game for a while. Georgetown had a huge disparity in the free throw attempts, but Syracuse caught up there, was getting to the free throw line in the second half and in overtime, certainly made enough of those, and they win and get a big win in overtime, 86-79. to 79. So we mentioned Tyus Battle. He had 29 points, was quiet for a while in the second half, but what Tyus Battle has done time and again, he has led this team in scoring every game but one this year. That was the Toledo game that he did not lead this team in scoring. He comes up in the second half. He comes up in the big spots when Syracuse needs a shot, when they need a play, when they need a spark. You know who they're going to. They're going to Tyus Battle, and he did it again. We mentioned that big three-pointer with a minute and a half to go. Had some plays in overtime and, you know, really comes through when he needed to. Syracuse hit the boards. You know, for a while, Georgetown was owning the boards here, but this is a Syracuse team that has been successful in rebounding all season long, and they ended up winning the rebounding battle today. 44-37, to 37, which they needed to. Another big thing is Syracuse hit threes in this game. This is a Syracuse team that has struggled to hit the three-point shot this year. Teams have been jacking up a lot of threes on the Orange. That was not the case for Georgetown today. They went the other way. Georgetown was 2 of 17 from three-point range because they got to the basket. They were breaking down the zone, and they attacked the basket. And they were doing it you know, successfully throughout the game. Jesse Govan, their go-to guy in the middle, ended up with 21 points, and both Pascal Chukwu, who had that great dunk in overtime, but struggled for the most part in this game, was in foul trouble most of the way. He only had two points. Barama Sadabi really struggled today. He's still coming back from that ankle injury. He's clearly not 100%, but they needed him in this game, but he was dropping the ball, made some turnovers, just didn't have a good day. So, you know, Syracuse had to, you know, adjust, especially inside with the big men who couldn't play defense on goal then, couldn't stop this Georgetown team from penetrating the zone and getting inside. So Syracuse had to fight fire with fire and get that offense going, and that's exactly what they did. Got to give credit, though, a couple names that we mentioned, a few that we haven't. Merrick Dolzhai with eight rebounds, doing his usual thing. Boy, I can't believe he got up after that fall. Were you guys like me? I was – I was. Whew. Say a prayer at that moment because I thought they were going to wheel out the stretcher, go through concussion protocol. You Somebody slams their head on the court like that. It was pretty nasty, but, you know, it was like the uh, the old Black Knight from the Monty Python movies, merely a flesh wound, and he just kept going. They checked him out, and he was fine. But, you know, Merrick Dolzhai actually scored a couple of times in this game, key rebounds down the stretch, doing his grit hustle thing, floor burn thing that he's been doing all year. Matthew Moyer has to get a big shout-out as well. I mean, we usually hit all the players in some capacity here when we do these things, but he had 11 rebounds, and he had a lot of key rebounds down the stretch, and Frank Howard found him underneath the basket for a couple of big dunks. This is a guy who had 18 points against UConn, looked great, shut down against Colgate, just went right back into the struggles that he had had. But he really stepped up big today with Pascal Chukwu and Barama Sadaibi both struggling under the basket. So big shout-out to him and a guy we haven't even mentioned yet and certainly need to. What a difference with Frank Howard this year because Jim Beheim knows he's got to let him play through his mistakes and make up for his mistakes. And Frank Howard made some mistakes in this game. They weren't all his fault. He had seven turnovers. There were some passes he threw that just got dropped or you know certainly were not on his end. But – you have to have a little more patience with Frank on that end. He's running the point. There's only three guards on this team, and Howard Washington Jr. is just not ready to take on big minutes, particularly on the defensive end. You know, a lot of people ask that question, why doesn't Howard Washington play more? Typically the answer to anybody and why they don't play more when it comes to Jim Beheim is defense because you got to get used to the zone and used to the rotations, and Jim Beheim does not want to go to that three-guard offense unless absolutely necessary, but it's also three-guard defense. So Frank's got to play through these mistakes, and he did today. There was a key stretch when you're starting to – maybe the thought creeps in your head, like, and they're going to lose this game. They're down 13, they're down 12, they're down 10 down the stretch, but Frank had a, a series of drives to the basket that kind of sparked his team. And if you look at the plays in overtime, the dish to tie his battle for the three, I mentioned a couple of, of passes – that he had to Matthew Moyer for some dunks. Frank Howard's really starting to be smart about distributing the ball, and when he's got to take over on the offensive end, because there were times he had to take those shots, take what the defense gave him, because for a good part of this game, Georgetown kind of shut off the inside. 
Syracuse was settling for some perimeter shots. They could not get their offense going, but finally found a way in. And it was Frank Howard who did that. It was Frank Howard who kind of opened the door for Syracuse there. Frank ends up with 19 points and nine assists in this game and uh, big time in terms of how he was running this offense and got this team back in this thing. So, hey, you'll take it any way you can get it. Syracuse makes a big comeback. And now you get four straight at home to finish out. You've got Buffalo coming up next week. You've got St. Bonaventure coming up. You've got Eastern Michigan coming up. And then before you know it, I mean, we're all getting ready for Christmas. We're only less than 10 days away right right now. And happy Hanukkah to those of you out there celebrating as well. Happy holidays, as they say. New Year's Eve is the start of ACC play. What do you do on New Year's Eve? You're probably going to be watching Syracuse, Virginia Tech, right? So they get three more non-conference games. And what was important in winning this Georgetown game is you got another uh, rivalry win in your back pocket because Syracuse beat UConn, of course, back on December 5th. Their only non-conference loss, the only loss of the season, of course, is Kansas so far. That would qualify as kind of a quality loss, right, because Kansas is a good team. Although Mike Hopkins and that Washington Husky squad beat them. sure you guys saw that a couple weeks back. So – what you've got now is an opportunity here to go into ACC play 12-1. and one. Syracuse is 9-1 and one with Buffalo. Look, St. Bonaventure is not going to be an easy game. They have one of the best backcourts in the country. Jalen Adams is getting healthier and is one of the best players Syracuse is going to play. I can't wait to see Frank Howard and Jalen Adams go kind of tit for tat in that game. And then you finish out with Eastern Michigan, our old friend Rob Murphy. And, you know, Syracuse has not been challenged by the Eastern Michigan team in the past few years when they've been scheduling this non-conference series. So that's what was important in getting this win and showing that they can come back in a game like this because now you can go into ACC play 12-1. and one. And what really sunk Syracuse's battleship last year was non-conference play. They did not pick up a quality non-conference win of note. They couldn't win on the road, and it carried over into ACC play. By the time Syracuse kind of figured out what they were doing and picked up some big wins. You know, the John Gillen shot that beat Duke and a couple of wins they got down the stretch in ACC play was too late because they had not picked up any non-conference wins. But so far, so good in that department with a few more opportunities to come here for the Orange. So what a game, what a win. Uh, what do you guys think about the rivalry? Because this is the third of a four-game stretch. So Syracuse and Georgetown are going to play next year at the Dome. And that is the scheduled conclusion of a four-game stretch. When they scheduled this a couple years ago, I wondered if this would be the last time that Syracuse and Georgetown would play regularly, right? Because there was, of course, the last time Syracuse and Georgetown went to overtime, as a matter of fact, was that amazing Big East tournament game in 2013. And then there was a little lull, and then they scheduled this series, four games, two at Georgetown, two at Syracuse. And I wonder if they're going to renew this thing. So we'll see about that. I'm kind of over the Syracuse-Georgetown thing, to be honest with you, as great as this game was. And CBS certainly had a lot of fun with the nostalgia. And we mentioned the Jim Beheim comments there. You know, look, would you rather play Georgetown on December 16th or, you know, some random out-of-conference team that just kind of is filler? That's what I like about this non-conference schedule. Almost every other game has been interesting or has been a tough challenge for Syracuse or has been – you know, a game that helps their RPI, their strength of schedule. There's just something about when you put these two teams on the court, you get these kind of games. I mean, Georgetown has been awful the past couple of years, but guess what? They beat Syracuse two games in a row before this. We mentioned their non-conference schedule. Nobody knew how good Georgetown was because they've been playing MEAC teams all year, teams that have strength of schedules in the 300s. Well, Look, you put Syracuse and Georgetown on a court and good things happen. So it may not be what it used to. It probably won't be what it used to. But I like that there's still a regular series between these two. Should they play every year? I don't know. Maybe that's debatable. But it just seems like every time they get together, a fun game like this happens. So let's see what you guys are saying in the comments here. Arthur wants to keep the rivalry going. Michael wants to keep it going. Steve says, I hope they renew another stretch of games. Always great entertainment, no matter where the programs are. And that's a true sign of the rivalry, Steve. It's not this team's up, this team's here, this team's there, this team's there. No matter how good or bad these two teams are, you seem to get these games. 
And I mentioned it, Georgetown was awful the last two years. That's why they have a new coach. That's why they fired John Thompson the third. And Big John was there. I mean, Big John's not going to stay away too long, right? Especially when his greatest player and his, you know, one of the greatest triumphs he had as a coach, Patrick Ewing, as a player, is taking over the program, keeping it in the family per se. But, yeah, you know, Big John's still a little bitter about JT3 getting the boot there at Georgetown, but they had to make a change. They were losing recruits. They were not keeping local recruits home. They had some losing seasons, and it was just losing steam. But they kept it in the family, Patrick Ewing taking over. Patrick Ewing, uh, according to many, was ready for a head coaching gig in the NBA. But they taught them into taking over as all the modern, get some run, get some experience as a head coach. So, look, you're relying on nostalgia. Right, I made the analogy on my radio show this week. It's kind of like Star Wars. So Star Wars is just stay with me for a minute here. A lot of people are like Star Wars. What are you talking about? But Star Wars is the ultimate combination now of nostalgia. You know, they bring back the old characters like Luke Skywalker and Leia and Chewbacca. And I won't do my bad Chewbacca impression for you, but you bring back the familiar characters, but you create your own for a new generation to relate to. The problem with Syracuse Georgetown was a new generation had really nothing to relate to. Everything they knew and everything they heard about Syracuse Georgetown was the stories we told about, you know, the names we just mentioned, Patrick Ewing and John Thompson and Jim Beheim. And back in the day in the 80s, you don't know how good it was. And, you know, kids of of this era, not even kids, like millennials, you know, people that are 25, 30, 35 years old, they're relying on other people's memories. They don't have their own. But as we mentioned here in the comments, a true sign of a good rivalry is no matter what, you put two teams on the court and you get a great game like this one. So maybe if they can reboot this thing and maybe this is a game that fits that description and new players come along and new faces come along, although you're still relying on nostalgia, what was the big headline, the big storyline of this game? Bayheim versus Ewing. Well, for somebody who didn't grow up watching Patrick Ewing, who was not there, I was there. Many of you watching were there when those oranges hit the backboard and Patrick Ewing was there and they had to get on the PA at the Dome and tell people to stop throwing oranges on the court. I mean, there's a lot of people today that didn't live through that. They've only heard the stories. So what a new generation needs is their own Syracuse Georgetown stories, and maybe they'll get that if they keep this rivalry going. It needs a refresher, but still relying on nostalgia, relying on the familiar names that you know, like Star Wars fans rely on Luke Skywalker. By the way, I will not get into my Star Wars review. I did see The Last Jedi. I've got plenty of thoughts, trust me, but you know, I'll, I'll keep them to myself for now because a lot of people still need to get out there and see that movie. So big win for the Orange, 86-79 here in overtime over Georgetown. And we're starting to see, you know, look, this is a young team and they're not very deep. And we saw if one, look at the first half, O'Shea Brissett struggled and Syracuse couldn't get, you know, couldn't find the other guy to kind of make up for it. Tyus Battle had 11 points, and Frank Howard was making some plays, but it just goes to show you that how many players have to be kind of in rhythm and in sync for the Syracuse team to be as good as they can be. But what you can't teach is grit and hustle and the things that make good rebounding teams. This is a good rebounding team. Why? Because they get after it because they know they've got to fight for rebounds. This was not a good defensive team for a lot of the game, but made enough defensive stops, and they buy into defense. That's a mentality. If Merrick Dolzhai hits the floor, would have easily been, you know, probably would have been advisable for him to sit out after that, but he wants back in there. This team's got grit. They've got heart. They get after it, and you can't teach that. And I think that when you have such a short bench now, you know, Barama Sadaibi is overcoming an ankle injury. You lost Geno Thorpe, and, you know, for a while there, Tyus Battle had that back injury. He's obviously fine because he's led this team in scoring all but one game. But there's so many, you know, pieces of this engine that really have to be going at the same time for this team to be as successful as they need to be. But they're going to do this. They're going to fall into 10-point holes, 12-point holes, even against a team like Georgetown. And the way you get out of that is you got to make defensive stops, you got to get in that press, and you got to make grit plays. And this team has the mentality to do that. Frankly, there's been a couple of teams in recent years that didn't have that mentality, different teams with different makeups. So this is a team that knows how to rally together. That's a good 
lesson for this team. You know, rivalries and all those stories about Syracuse Georgetown is great, and that just naturally happens when these teams get together. But this is a team that's going to have to fight, scratch, and claw its way through ACC play. And you got to know how to do it. There's got to be a reference point there, right? So what's great about this is, yeah, it's different when you're playing Georgetown as opposed to, say, you know, Georgia Tech in ACC play. But you need a reference point. When you get down 8, 10, 12 points, which you're inevitably going to do in league play, Bayheim at some point in that huddle can say, hey, guys, we can do this. We were down 13 at Georgetown. Here's how we got out of this hole. Here's how we'll get out of this one. And that's what the, this team is. They're not the most talented team top to bottom. They're still fighting their way. They're still very young. But they fight their butts off. And they will rebound. And they will play defense. And they will, they'll will they get in there and, and, and just do all the grit and hustle things that they need to. And it's fun to watch. This is a team that you can embrace. And for a while there, it was looking like, okay, maybe this isn't your day. You're down 53-40 with 10 minutes to go. And they just could not hit a shot. But you know, that's why there's still time on the clock. That's why you play to the end. And you get into overtime and you avoid – can we stomach losing three straight games to Georgetown? Especially when this is not league play. You don't get them twice a year. You don't get them again in a couple of weeks. You don't see them in a conference tournament. This is it. This is it. Right? You play them once a year, and that's all you got. And this was on CBS. So how great did that turn out for Syracuse, by the way? That this is a national game. A lot of people are kind of – tuning in on here on a Saturday afternoon, and maybe you saw the score down early and you're like, oh, what's wrong with Syracuse? But then you're going to see that final score. You're going to circle back and be like, hey, that was a hell of an effort by the Orange. I think if they keep this up, I don't know if they'll be in the poll this week because they only played one game. But if you beat Buffalo and St. Bonaventure next week, I think you're going to see Syracuse get into the top 25. They're getting votes now. And, you know, Georgetown's not exactly a huge win. It's huge for Syracuse fans and the rivalry aspect, but their strength of schedule is so bad. It's not a, a win that will get you into the top 25. But if Syracuse keeps winning, I think by the time ACC play comes around on New Year's Eve, this could be a top 25 team. You know, by ranking, we can argue if it's a top 25 team by merit, but by ranking, they might be. So Syracuse gets a big win today. And, you know, we've only got a few more days till they get back at it Tuesday night against Buffalo. We will be back here for Facebook Live, probably for Virginia Tech. Maybe St. Bonaventure. We'll see. You know, we've been doing a few here in non-conference play. But just so you guys know, if you're watching us here on Facebook Live, we will do this regularly for ACC play. We'll be here pretty much after every ACC game, maybe one or two more here in non-conference play. It's fun to pop on here and do this after the games, and we'll kind of get into a regular of doing it in ACC play. But today was certainly a big enough day to get on here and do it, and I was happy to do it. We do chat live on Syracuse.com for every game as well, so come hang with me during that as well. That's going to do it for this edition, though, of Facebook Live here on the Syracuse.com Syracuse Basketball Facebook page. Thanks for chatting along. Thanks for your great comments. Thanks for watching. Syracuse wins 86-79, to getting that weekend off to a great start. Because it's 3.53 in Georgetown. What? That's right. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody. We'll talk to you next time.